life on Earth has been around for a long time. I mean, a long time. So it's helpful to understand a little bit about the geological time scale and just how long we're talking. Understanding the geological time scale is all about understanding how long the Earth's been alive and what happens at different parts. This is one of my favorite representations of the geological time scale. Let's take a slightly closer look. The right now is the part that's closest to us. And you can see as we go back in time, there's actually less and less life. And if you go back far enough, you can see there's hardly anything going on. And this represents at one time, there was no life and it took some time for complex and more life to evolve after that. Um, this of course is a graphical representation. So let's look at something a little bit more specific. Here you can see that we organize different periods of time into different uh, different different lengths. So eons are pretty long periods of times and we have eras within an eon. Within eras we have periods and within periods we have epics. Um, but let's start close to us and let's work backwards in time. Um, here in the Pleistocene that's where we see a lot of Neanderthals. Um, in the Eocene that's where we see the very first fossil primates. Um, the KT boundary, that's when the asteroid killed off all of the dinosaurs. Um, and that big green part, um, the Mesozoic, that's where we see dinosaurs. There are, of course, different dinosaurs um, within these different periods. Um, and that's actually where we see the first mammals. You probably have already heard this, but the dinosaurs you see in Jurassic Park, they were mostly dinosaurs that actually lived in the Cretaceous. They mostly used the word Jurassic because they liked how it sounded better. Um, going back farther, uh, the Devonian, that's where we see a lot of fish originate. Um, we have the Cambrian explosion right there at the very beginning of the Paleozoic. Um, but let's, let's try and organize this a little bit more because we are dealing with a really big period of time and that's a little bit difficult to conceptualize. So let's look at this right here. We can actually go back to about 13.7 billion years ago and that's about how old we think the universe is. The age of the Earth is a lot younger than that, only about um, 4.5 billion years. The oldest fossils are about three and a half billion years, so we do think life um, emerged sometime in between there, probably around four billion years ago. So of course, that's really hard to date precisely. Um, we see the first multicellular life only 700 million years. So there's a pretty long stretch of time between when life evolved before multicellular life um, emerged. Um, we have the Cambrian explosion. We'll talk about that later at about 543 million years ago. The oldest dinosaurs are 230 million years ago. And primates are just right there. Very recent, um, everything considered. Um, so most of the time when we're looking at the fossil record, it's just a tiny slice of all time and a tiny slice of all of the life that's ever lived on the Earth. But let's let's look at just the age of the Earth here rather than all of the universe. Um, so the Earth is about four and a half billion years old pretty old. Um, in the Hadean, that was um, when the Earth is still forming. We pr don't think there was much life going on at that part time because it was just too hot. And it was only um, into the Archaean where we, now we're starting to see the oldest rocks, the Earth's crust is forming, it's cooling down. That's when um, life might have evolved. Next, we have the Proterozoic, um, and now we have a C, and we do think life is definitely evolving at this time, So though it's mostly single so single cells. Um, what's interesting is you might notice these three uh, periods that we just talked about, we just call them the pre-Cambrian. Um, it's kind of fun funny because we just call everything that happened before the Cambrian pre-Cambrian because biologists care more about living things than rocks and geologists are like, but, but the pre-Cambrian is most of the history of the earth. So there is definitely a bias towards living things when we're naming things in the geological time scale. Because um, most of the time we are talking about these things right at the top. We're talking about the Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic. And that's where all of the fossils that you've already heard about happen. So the Cambrian is the first one. Then we have the Ordovician, Silurian, Devonian, Carboniferous, Permian, Triassic, Jurassic, Cretaceous, and Tertiary. And this is where we get to see all of those really interesting and exciting life forms. Um, 
But more than just looking back in time, we also want to understand the phylogenetic tree of life and how all of us are related. So here is a phylogenetic tree that contains all living things. And you can see we have three domains. We have bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. We are over here in eukarya, and you can see eukarya and archaea, they come together closer to each other than bacteria. This means they are both more closely related to each other than either of them are to bacteria. But we are eukaryotes, so let's talk a little bit about what this means. Um, we are in the domain eukarya, and that means we have a very special cellular structure. We have our DNA safely encased in the nucleus. It keeps it um, protected from um, environmental things, so it's uh, slightly less susceptible to mutation. Um, we also have many different cell organelles. We have these different structures within our cells to carry out very specific purposes. Um, so. We just talked about a lot of things. What is the geological time scale? And what are eukaryotes?